Frying pans are great. You can cook food in them, they're nice and sturdy, and they make a satisfying noise when they hit things. That's the one. Game developers looked at those last two properties, went ooh, and proceeded to add frying pan weapons to tons of games. Look around now and you'll find plenty of flat metal kitchenware amongst the usual high-powered guns and sleek-looking swords. What's more, they often turn out to be the best weapons, whether that's for their stats or for the pure joy that they bring to the wielder. <laughs> I love this thing. Here then are the games that prove how frying pans are the best weapons of all time, but where minor spoilers for the following games. What do you get if you put together a squirrel and a frying pan? No, not a weird episode of Survivor, but Conker's Bad Fur Day. Released by Rare in 2001, this game follows the story of a rowdy rodent trying to get home after a big night out. Unfortunately for titular tree tenant Conker, there are plenty of things and creatures trying to stop him from doing that. So to help you through, you're armed with a trusty frying pan. Hang on. Something missing here. Didn't I have a... Ah! The main use for the pan, other than making a brilliant sound whenever it hits something, is to stop things from running away from you, whether that be keys, cheese, or sweet corn. In a perfect world, that last one would have been peas. However, the pan itself is also good at wrecking up larger enemies. For instance, this gargoyle you meet on a bridge greatly underestimates the comedic power of the pan. A frying pan. <laughs> you stupid little... <laughs> Later on, while Conqueror is fighting a, quote, bourgeois big bollocked boiler, he whittles down its health with a painful looking pair of bricks. But the final blow is from a swing of the skillet. The pan was so beloved that in the Xbox remake, Live and Reloaded, Conker was given extra enemies around the world to bash to pieces with it. <laughs> Wonderful! Although we're less keen on Rare's controversial decision to nerf the frying pan in this remake, making it less effective at killing this gargoyle. A frying pan? You stupid little t Hmm. Wasn't he meant to fall off here? Reload. Reload. When the apocalypse hits, it's important to hit back, especially if that apocalypse is a bunch of flesh-eating zombies trying to bite your limbs off. So before you lose your arms, it's best that you arm yourself. Lucky for you, zombie shooter Left 4 Dead 2 has plenty of things to help you fight off its many hordes. Weapons! I need this. Alongside plenty of guns for you to panic shoot into a roiling mass of the undead, developer Valve gives you access to plenty of melee weapons to swing wildly about while you pray you actually hit something. Reloading! Reloading! And our favourite by far is the humble frying pan. Frying pan! Also known as the skillet, this cast iron cooking apparatus can be picked up in various kitchens around the game and used to swat away zombies. Although it's not the melee weapon in the game with the most reach, the skillet has a wide arc and a fast swing. Thus, it's a very useful weapon if you find yourself surrounded and need to clear a path, which is regularly the case. Plus, because it's an everyday item, this frying pan is more common than other melee weapons, meaning that it's a weapon that can more readily be relied upon. This will work. Although cast iron pans do require a lot of care when cleaning compared to other kitchen equipment, I'm not sure the previous owners of these cast iron skillets would be very happy with how you're maintaining their carefully seasoned cookware. You're meant to rinse in warm water, then coat with a thin layer of oil, not a thick layer of zombie goop. Ew, don't think you're going to want to cook any fry-ups in it after that. Oh. 
Dead Rising sees you trapped inside a shopping mall, surrounded by figures mindlessly shambling around you, except this time, they're zombies. Being trapped in a marble-floored palace of capitalist consumerism is oddly handy, as you can help yourself to anything you find that isn't nailed down. This makes possible a multitude of fun weapons to use against the undead. <laughs> Fortunately for us and our hero Frank West, there are plenty of restaurants in malls, and that means the opportunity to find our favourite piece of cookware, the faithful frying pan. Like the other pans on this list, Dead Rising's skillets are powerful and fun to swing around. With 30 hits before it breaks, the skillet is a solid weapon to get your hands on, especially at the start of the game. Plus, it still makes that great noise even if you lob it right at a zombie's face. But what is really special about these pans is that, being in restaurants, they can usually be found near functioning stovetops. This allows Frank to heat them up, turning them red hot and increasing the damage that can be inflicted on the undead. Not only that, but it opens up a new attack, which is good guy Frank holding the pan up to a zombie's face and searing it off. Mmm, that, that smells lovely. Doing this move helps turn the pan into a one-hit, one-kill beast, burning a zombie's face to a crisp before it falls harmlessly to the ground. I call it the Zombie Flambe, or Zomble. And no, you don't want the full recipe. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, aka PUBG, is a multiplayer game which drops dozens of players into a world with a dangerous circular barrier closing in until there is only one winner. If that sounds familiar, that's because as soon as PUBG popularised this battle royale game mode, everyone and their mum jumped on that bandwagon. But PUBG wasn't above bandwagons itself, popping in a frying pan amongst the game's different weaponry like many other wise developers before them. And they made it very clear that the pan was to be used to crack skulls and not eggs, with the in-game description, not for cooking. This weapon became iconic for the series, with PUBG even creating pan-themed gaming merch, also described as not for cooking. As the most powerful melee item in the game, the PUBG pan packed a punch and was definitely worth the risk of close combat, if only to try and embarrass your more heavily armed foes. Hey, we did say try. It was a panic throw. We're not skilled with a skillet, okay? But mortifying melee kills weren't the only reason the pan was beloved by players. Oh, I killed him! <laughs> in an update intended to allow you to swat away grenades with the pan, oh, you hit it! PUBG unknowingly created bulletproof pans. So should you manage to get a hold of one and store it on your back, you could feel more confident running towards your next target. If anyone was behind you, that bulletproof pan could literally save your butt. Oh, yes, you pan! <gasps> This was such a funny unintended outcome that memes quickly sprung up, and PUBG even had pans with targets painted on the bottom of them as an additional nod to the joke. It's funny how these things pan out. <laughs> uh, sorry. Here we go! When you finish culinary school, you're usually rewarded with the knowledge that you know how to cook. But this is not the case in Disney and Square Enix's Kingdom Hearts universe, where you're rewarded with the knowledge that you don't even know how to crack eggs. Oops. Oh. Sorry. Remy's Twilight Town Cafe, Le Grand Bistro, offers a cooking mini-game. Get five stars on every main menu item within this game, and you're awarded a five-star bistro and the Grand Chef Keyblade. With this keyblade being built out of wine bottles, a corkscrew, the Eiffel Tower, cutlery, a chef's hat, and the restaurant sign from Remy's Parisian Cafe La Ratatouille, you might think, why are you talking about this? This isn't a frying pan. This is a frying pan. Look, Flynn Rider fights with a frying pan. But, as well as adding your mum's favourite Disney prints, Kingdom Hearts 3 introduced Keyblade transformations. There. The game takes these Disney-filmed-themed key-shaped weapons and gives them each special transformations, which have elaborate special attacks to use on your enemies. Light. 
and that's on top of giving Sora the ability to conjure Disneyland rides to bash them all into nothing. Whoa! Pretty sure if this happens in Fantasyland, that's a lawsuit. Anyway, once powered up enough, the Grand Chef Keyblade can be changed into a frying pan in a wonderfully elaborate flame and food filled transformation. There! We have to say, watching Sora gracefully leap about while frisbeeing and thwonking his foes with a Ratatouille Bistro branded frying pan is ridiculously entertaining. Best of all, though, is the finishing move. When this kicks off, your trusty skillet becomes a comically huge frying pan, which Sora thwonks down, complete with what looks like steak, asparagus, and tomato. Not only can Sora swing about a pan large enough for him to lie down in, but he does that final move with so much force that the pan itself goes white hot and lands in flames. Wow, with cooking skills that hot, I bet Sora can make a mean duck a l'orange. Wait, I mean, oh god, no one tell Donald I said that. Wouldn't that be a good spot to find some ingredients? Dead Cells is what you'd get if Dark Souls and Metroid had a baby. Oh no wait, that sounds horrible. I take it back. As you make your way through this Metroidvania death run, you have all sorts of weapons at your disposal, but there was one that caught players' attention before the game was released, thanks to an animated trailer. This Dead Cells frying pan, known as the Volpan in-game, and only made available in a post-launch update, isn't easy to get, requiring you to complete the game multiple times. However, this is all for good reason, that reason being that it is far too powerful to be in your hands any sooner. Once you get a hold of it, it guarantees a critical hit if the enemy you're attempting to bash on the bonce is facing you. Oh, and it of course makes an excellent noise while doing so. So loved was the Volpan that it featured in the trailer for the Bad Seed DLC, this time in two-panned nunchuck form, which sadly we've been unable to find in the game. Perhaps the developers know it would be simply too powerful. The saying goes, good things come to those who wait, but anyone who has worked in the service industry can tell you that's all lies. It is at least true in the world of Fable, where you can find a frying pan by being patient and unravelling a lengthy puzzle. Ah, you have found your first treasure clue. Rumours abound that an item of value lies hidden somewhere in Albion. The clues should lead you to it. I understand there are six of them in all. This entails hunting down six separate clues to lead you to the location of a frying pan buried on a farm, perhaps by an optimistic pig who thought, hey, no pan, no bacon. This elusive frying pan packs a punch with not only 100 damage for any hit, but also four augment slots. These allow you to add mystical stones imbued with special powers, making the fully upgraded pan a hugely versatile melee weapon. However, if you're the impatient cheaty sort and you skip straight to the burial spot by looking it up online, you will receive the frying pan stripped of its powers and augment slots. So you found the treasure despite not having all the clues. I hope you'll find some use for your prize. In other words, your reward is a pan with zero damage that wouldn't so much as hurt a fly. Okay, beetle. However, the pan itself is still excellent even with zero damage, mainly because hitting someone over and over and over with a frying pan is quite funny. The Fable frying pan is also great purely on account of its design. Both in the original game and in Anniversary, the pan has a very distinct pattern on the flat base of the pan, namely the imprinted face of the last person unfortunate enough to be hit very hard with it. So, those were the games that prove that the frying pan is the best weapon of all time. It's pretty rad. And, and how about those sound effects? So satisfying. Why is that so satisfying? Weird. What is it in the human brain that makes a frying pan donk feel just so right? 
I don't know, I'm not a scientist. But can you think of any other frying pans in games that we didn't talk about that are also good examples of why frying pans are so great? If so, uh, drop a note in the comments to let us know. And if you enjoyed this, please do like and subscribe. Ring that bell so that you get notified next time we post a video like this one. And if you did enjoy this, then I think you'll enjoy other things we do on the channel, like we do um, live streams where we just sort of talk about games and, and, and have a good time. They're pretty chill. Uh, we have Let's Plays as well. Um, if you liked this list video and you like the sense of humour that I'm confident it will be your kind of thing. So yeah, check them out. Anyway, take it easy folks. Thanks for watching. Bye.